Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. We've got a really fun session in store for us today. So I'm gonna be doing a 30 minute session, distance, psychic wisdom and energy healing is what I do. And the goals are to explore this three-eyed moon girl. So there's a conspiracy. There was an Apollo 20 mission and on the moon they found a wreckage and a, a corpse of a girl that had three eyes. There's pictures, they're very interesting looking. And I mean, it's a, it's, it's a phenomenal find. We, we're living in a world where we don't really know what's the truth, what's not the truth. Here's a conspiracy, here's a debunk of the conspiracy. It's all mumbo jumbo, blah, blah, blah. So how do we know what's real, what's not real? We have to follow our inner guidance because there is collective information. And so we all seek to expand in our own individual way and sometimes through collective information. So she's a representation of information that is sparking a collective of us. So if she's real, she's not real, she is real. Because in the energy world, everything is alive, okay? Everything we have here is everything we have in the energy world is interdimensionally accessible. So I'm going to be tuning into the, that representation of, like, how would, I, how would I describe it? Because I don't know how the universe is going to echo the information forward. And so for me, I'm going to read your goals word for word. I'm going to tune into the universe and then I'm going to see what echoes back. And then that's, that's how we're going to grow from this experience. And it's going to be amazing. I, I feel like there's, there's a lot of us that we know there's life beyond planet Earth. We know there's so much more than just this. A lot of us feel deep down inside that we are withheld truths. It's, it's a cruel thing to do. To withhold the truth is a cruel thing to do. At what point are we ready to finally know more about alien beings? Are we able to know more about events like this and what we've learned from it, what we know about it in some intelligent manner? Instead of, oh, it's just another conspiracy, we got to debunk that. I mean, it's only recently that they're saying that UFOs exist. And we have to tiptoe around that. It's like walking on eggshells, right? To, to have these conversations, to say alien beings are real. It's kind of laughable that it would be such a discomfort to say that alien beings are real. And it would be an absurd thing to say. I feel it's pretty shallow. <laughs> I mean, the universe is an enormous place that is creatively alive, that is communicating. And whether you can see the life or you can't, you can know it's true in your heart. There's more out there than just us. And there's interdimensional reality. So there's planes that overlap planes that overlap planes of existence. And there's so much communication happening. And we want to be in the flow of this interdimensional communication. She is a, a poster board of exactly what we know is real out there. And we want access to that. What is her voice for all of us? What does she represent? Um, in the spirit of humanity. She exists. She's accessible to us for a reason. So <laughs> I love that you booked this session. Thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you for sharing this with others here on YouTube. It's going to be a beautiful journey. At least I think it will be. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not. I don't know. But you say... Uh, could you tell me more about her story of the three eye moon girl from beginning to end? Okay. <laughs> oh, what a treasure. I'm going to relax now and get tuned in. Okay. Still getting in the zone here. Okay, there's two images. I'm not sure which one to start with. One of them is very peaceful. 
Very slow moving, feels like drifting at a very, very, very slow pace. It's mesmerizing, to be honest. It's not that I'm just looking at something drifting in outer space at a very slow pace. I feel like I'm part of it. A slow motion drift. Even feel like, I mean, this would be the pace of a snail, okay? This would be the pace of a, a growing tree. And we're not talking about trees that just pop up out of the ground. We're talking about slow growing trees. The other scene is more difficult. It's just a piercing sensation in the gut. It kind of is like the size of an icicle. It's just a piercing sensation in the gut. Like an icicle is just pushed into the gut like a knife. I'm not so interested in pain. I'm interested in this peaceful drift. I tell she's telling us that okay, boy, this is important. So it's kind of hard to know how to speak because for me to speak, I'm going to be speaking quickly in comparison to the frequency pattern and the pace that she's communicating at, and I feel like it's distorting our connection. She's really peaceful. She's in no hurry. She has no ego, so it's not for her to be found or not found. For her to... It uh, doesn't feel like she associates with anything like a physical reality. She associates with vibration. Because she's showing me an important message for the human race. It has to do with how we are denying ourselves our own evolution and evolution is a vibrational thing because she's showing me at this slow drifting pace we can be still and we can be silent and that we can in a way become of the vibration of the universe which is peacefully drifting or peacefully expanding drifting and expansion it just She's just showing me that when we attune or tune into and then match it, this pace, we will feel so incredibly free. And the faster we go, we are running away faster and faster and faster and faster. We are running away from our freedom. We are running away from the vibration. She doesn't... She doesn't um, worry. She's not... Uh, the human race runs away from this vibration. It's it's not neither good nor bad. It's just it this is what she is saying is the truth, okay? She says the truth is what we seek. We are running away from the vibration the truth. All that we will acquire will be further from the truth. This vibration is like a key in that we are capable of unlocking and aligning with this vibration 
And once we do this, we will become the truth. It's not necessarily evolution so much as it is being the truth. It's I'm sending her just like seeds, it's just very, very mild ripples in the pond here. I feel like she's sleeping, but she's neither sleeping nor awake. She's drifting. She's neither drifting nor expanding other than in alignment with the sound of the universe. To me, naturally, there's many sounds of the universe. There's many sounds of creation. But she tells me there's one sound that we all share. It's one sound that is it's like part of what is everything and why everything holds everything together. I'm starting to hear the sound of a heartbeat. I'm starting to feel what is like waking up from a sleep. What's interesting is there's something of like dragon wings that are lying down on the back. It's only if they were being used you might see them. And I see a woman slowly moving into a waking state, kind of like a flower slowly opening to the sun. She's sharing with me something really cool. It's actually drum beats and it's joy. <laughs> Not drumming that gets you dancing or leaping, but it's like drumming that paces your heart, paces your breath, trances you really. I feel like she knows what happiness is. She really doesn't. I say, how did you die? I say, what is your association with this image? Is this real? What we define as real? I never get answers from the energy world about what's real or not real because everything's real. Everything is real. If you're a living person or a deceased person, you're just as energetically real as, you know, it's like, what is life? What is death? You, your vibration, your frequency, you're, you're alive. You know, what's an idea? It's alive. Everything's alive, you know. It's how it impacts you. I love her energy so much. She's... What I love about her, how she's expressing herself is not controlling. It's just presenting her, presenting her vision, her meaning, what she knows. And you can pursue it, you don't have to, like it's completely up to you. There's nothing else there. She's very, very purely <laughs> I don't know how you can explain it. It's like knowing who you are, knowing the conversation, not budging your own presence altering your language to suit someone else, but being at your pace, at your time, and your, 
and it's okay either way like there's no expectations no relationship with life or death so it doesn't compute I ask you about the picture with the icicle and the stabbing as she's looking at it for a while doesn't alter her vibration and her connection with the vibration she's tuning into. It's very consistent. She never leaves that vibration. No point in leaving it. No, nothing else is real or as real or as the truth as this vibration. So to be outside that vibration is to be a distortion. In the best way I could explain it. So we're denying ourselves in alignment with the truth, which isn't a thought or a feeling. It's just an it's a, an ex existence, a way of being. A, it's like you're a gong, and this is the sound, and all is the sound. <laughs> And in alignment with the sound is the sound of all, the sound of truth. Why would you not be the sound? It wouldn't make any sense, you know? Hmm. She's showing me that, okay, she can have purpose for sure. She doesn't resonate with this picture being associated with what she is, but a calling or a purpose for her. to help heal what hurts, to help the vibration be received somehow I, here on earth. It's almost like you, when you book this session, you're a link. And for me to do this session then and to share it on YouTube is a link. And it gives then a choice, right? If you choose to welcome her vibration, isn't her vibration. It's the same for everyone, everywhere, everything, everywhere. It's, she's a link to the memory of the vibration. And if you feel a calling, if you feel a relationship with, if it feels like it's part of your purpose, then, then welcome her to help you remember. She's, she has purpose now too, and she's honoring the purpose. It's not a thought, and it's not even a feeling, it's just part of the truth, it's part of the vibration. And she shows me this picture, and then she places the picture on earth. And she shows me earth like a chakra. And the chakra has been... Um, she doesn't use the word stabbed. She just pierced, perhaps. I don't know what the difference between stabbed and pierced is, but it's more like pierced. Shows me... I guess if we're going to get specific. Shows me like um, piercing an ear versus actually stabbing in the gut. The piercing to the ear is going to hurt, but it's not the end of your life, right? The stabbing to the gut is um, its a requirement for serious medical attention and maybe even death. So it's pierced the earth. The earth as a chakra is pierced. 
and it it's not comfortable and we feel kind of like pierced ourselves okay it's not going to be the death of us but we might feel a pain even the heartbeat of a pain we might be aware that there is a pain in this world and we don't really know how to understand it more than that kind of live with the way things are she knows she has a calling and a purpose i really want to emphasize her energetic design or her nature we as human beings seek to find our our action or our place or you know, we want to be useful. We want to know why we're here. We, we want to know things. We want to feel like we matter. We want to, you know, we have so many like branches of the tree of being human. And those branches are all hands reaching for something, right? She's not reaching for anything. She's honoring that there's, there is a root in a way that, that is a hand reaching out to her in the truth in the vibration that i'm talking about she is present with it and she is part of it and those who reach her will connect with her will she will connect with you but she it's like already happening but it, now it's consciously happening which it makes it more impactful you know it's hard to just have a conversation because her energy is really consistent and i feel like i really i really want to make it very clear what it's like to communicate with her and to share what her essence her vibe what she is to me and to make it as genuinely true to its own nature as i can with english language <laughs> i don't know why i show her a picture that comes to me i show her i'm moving her from a space that is you know, she's basically sitting up right now. She looks like kind of a drag. I don't know why I think of dragonfly, but maybe a dragonfly wings and butterfly wings could somehow merge into something different. Maybe those would be her wings. That's like her wings are eyes too. That she's very peacefully sitting, inhaling, exhaling energetically part of the vibration and i kind of levitate her with my hand and then i just place her as just a ginormous version of herself like the size of the earth and i just place her there and she's not uh, even flinching about it but then i show her that when i place her here that then this piercing is yours as well as mine as well as all of ours as well as the whole universe is and maybe the piercing is only as real as a distortion is real to those who live with many outstretched branches trying to grasp another thing, another thing, another thing. She asks if I feel like she should cry for us, cry for the piercing, cry for the planet. or to maintain her vibrational frequency and maintain it consistently. She says the piercing is not for me. Hmm. She does say though that her as a giant, really cool butterfly dragon winged girl, I'm sort of like meditating the size of planet Earth, sort of an overlay of our planet. She nods to that. 
is true to the vibration, is true to the truth. Because she's not hurting. She's no, not in pain. Ask her about the moon. What the moon means to her. What these pictures, Apollo 20 mission, what does this mean to you? I'm suddenly sort of standing in the most peaceful could you imagine standing on the moon is a very, very peaceful place to stand? It feels so quiet here. I feel so peaceful and quiet. Like all the, the crackling noise of the earth just vanishes. I feel like it's a gift actually to have this experience right now. It was like she's helping us step into what she's representing. Because it's not about seeking her as physical persona. Because she never, while well, you could say, well, we've got a dead body here. She's never really a body. She was always a vibration. She's always been a vibration, always been for evermore and ever will be a vibration. So <sighs> she wants us to really tune into the truth because because she's showing me that the peace that is had when we do this is we'll realize that we are a vibration. It's the most important truth that she could share in this message. To really emphasize it. And again, I start to hear this drum beat. It's not like a snare drum by any means. But it's a warm sort of beat on a bongo or something it is not about dancing it's just about meditation it really tunes the heartbeat it tunes the whole being to that frequency that pace and once you learn the pace once you become the pace once you become the vibration there isn't anything else that is real other than the vibration. And I say, but this is real though. I mean, if I'm coming from a distortion and I'm sitting in a chair making this video on a cell phone, I'm in the reality of the distortion reality. So it's, this is what my, I'm working with. And I don't know that maybe it's because it's a collective puzzle. Like we all has like herd immunity or something. We all have to want this pace. We all have to want it. Because if only one of us wants it, the only way you'd probably be able to achieve it is to remove yourself from the sound and the pace of day-to-day -day life. She asks if you ever shows me pigment picnic blanket laying down on the grass and you turn everything that demands something of you off like a cell phone or watch or and you have to turn off the calendar of your mind you have to turn off everything and you just lay there and now know that you will lay there for 12 hours let's say and then you're going to do it every single day 
to the point that you've taught yourself the truth, taught yourself the vibration. She shows me there's a bit of a death to it. Because once you know the vibration, there's a bit of a death to it because that you're you you die in the distortion, so to speak, to become the vibration. It's and it's like and she shows me the inner peace, but it's not really inner because it's everything, it's everything, the whole universe. She's I'm gonna ask her if she can tell us something new. Okay, I'm actually going to go to a different... Oh, I can't go to a different area. <sighs> I want to see if I can get another viewpoint. Because I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of the same message, same pace. Because it is her. This is her. This is who she is. This is her pace. This is her purpose. This is her life force as it is all life force nobody can hurt her by the way she shows me that there's no such thing but she is open to helping bring the sound into your life if you desire to recall it, be a part of it again. Because you're part of her too. You're part of the vibration. She's not worried about the human race or how long it takes or lies, truth. It's just not at all relate to her at all. Nothing has to get done. There's a destruction of all things. There's always the vibration. It's just the only thing that's real. The truth is really the truth. Like reality is a perspective truly, but the truth is in this vibration. And it's once you align with it, there's nothing else to align to. Ask my guides if they could tell me anything something new, something different. Show me a different kind of view. Everything is in really super, super bright colors. If black could be a bright color, it's one of them. Then there's orange and yellow and whitish yellow and red then orange again, but there's black throughout and it's so vi vibrant, so vivid, so intense. There's now sitting down on what is like a black strip and you know, sitting there and enjoying everything that is a part of creation truly, completely, without thought, without feeling, because it's part of the creation of all things is the vibration, is the sense of pure, pure ecstasy, but it's not, I don't know if the word's ecstasy, because it's so completing, ecstasy is like joy, okay, pure, blissful joy, but this is so completing, there's an ecstasy to the sensation of completing, They show me this about her. They show me this about the message. They show me we're welcome here in this completing space. This isn't some kind of cult. It's just if we could, if we could find, we could listen. It's like if we could listen, we will hear that the universe has a sound, like the ohm sound, but it's like a sound if we didn't make a noise to it. Did we just feel it flowing through. We would align with it. We would feel this completing sense. They show me, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about. 
Like, why are we moving so fast? We just want things to go faster and faster and faster, but deep down inside, the faster we go, the further we are away from this pace, from this true pace. Why are we denying ourselves that? It was a really beautiful session. That's all I can share about this experience, the pace, what she represents. Even seeing this through the eyes of my spirit guides, it's, it's really honoring consistency with the power and importance of that. It makes a lot of sense to me. What if that's the only thing that makes sense? is the vibration and then how do you integrate the only thing that makes sense in a world that would renounce it and run away from it <laughs> i like how she is so continually at peace there's no worry rush fear i mean it's the concept of the tree with all the branches and the many human hands like reaching, 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 reaching. But to truly reach for completion, you have to be still and timeless in a way. It's like the drifting expansion of the universe. It's a really good messenger for this earth. And for it to be found on the moon Maybe that's a message in and of itself that the truth is closer than we know. It's just right over there on the moon. <laughs> and now it's in this message. <laughs> now it's here on earth. How do you want that? Like, how do you seek to want to align with and then live a life in alignment with? I, I don't know. I mean, I relate to it in my heart. I perfectly understand it. But I'm a perfectly also at peace with going through the motions of the familiar tree with the many reaching hands, perhaps living in the distortion. I'm okay with that. I came here to be a communicator of a lot of different messages. And so you're plucking apples from the tree of what I have to share and to seek what, what empowers you in your life to be the brightest shining star for this earth. It's a darn good message. And without your spark of inspiration, I wouldn't be sitting here and sharing it with all of you. <laughs> so I want to thank you. The client again so very much thank you so much for this thank you everybody for watching if you would like to explore a session with me you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com all right have a great day everybody